Hi guys, how are you doing? This is Sebastian from Tech Century, and as you guys probably know by now, a couple of weeks back I purchased my Alienware Area 51, a gaming PC, and while I'm very impressed with the system overall and the 6-core Intel Core i7 and also the GTX 970 as well as the 16GB of GDDR4 memory are great and all, Unfortunately, this machine just comes stock with a 2 terabyte hard drive, so it's a standard hard drive, and this is really the big bottleneck of the system, so I decided to upgrade it, and this video is about the upgrade process as well as some results that I'll show you in the end. Now, I decided to pick up the MX200 from Crucial for a couple of reasons. First off, there's also the MX100, which is cheaper, but this SSD only gives you 300 megabytes of write speeds. The MX200, on the other hand, gives you 550 megabytes of read speeds and 500 megabyte of write speed. And there's also the MX550, but that one has the best performance and it's also way more expensive than the MX200. So I paid 106 euros here in Germany for the 250 gigabyte version of the MX200. Now looking at the inside of the box, we basically just find the SSD inside here, as well as also a little paper with a code to um, download the Acronis true picture uh, software to actually then copy the standard hard drive to the SSD. So um, to clone this, I also picked up an IC box 2.5 to 3.5 inch adapter so that I can mount this SSD in the Alienware. Now, of course, first off, we have to install the SSD in the adapter and that's just four screws, it's very simple. Then on the back, we remove one screw at the Alienware to then slide off the right side panel. Inside, we then see the base for, I think, five hard drives or SSDs, of course. And in the long run, I'll definitely go SSD only. But for now, also for the cloning process, I'll keep the two terabyte hard drive in place. So then I just installed the SSD. Now, unfortunately, because the Area 51 has this kind of weird shape, it was very difficult to actually access or screw in this hard drive or SSD, I should rather say. So that's definitely a downfall of this case, but otherwise it's very nice. Now, then continuing on, of course, we just put the side panel back on. And then we are going to the Windows Drive Manager to then format the SSD so that it actually even shows up in the File Explorer because before it didn't. And in my case, I actually had to restart the Anware once before the SSD even showed up to begin with. Then I started using Drive Clone 11, which is a free software for personal use. And then it took one hour to clone my hard drive to the SSD. Next up, we had to go to the BIOS and then change to the new SSD as the boot drive. And then last but not least, we just installed the Crucial software and then you're done. So I had a little bit of trouble, but overall it was a pretty nice and simple process. And then the results were definitely worth it. Now, first off, when we just take a look at a like generic benchmark, then the regular hard drive, which is a two terabyte version, from Toshiba received write speeds of 193 megabytes per second and read speeds of 202 megabytes per second. And now the new SSD, the MX200 from Crucial receives write speeds of 507 megabytes per second, as well as read speeds of 557 megabytes per second. So more than double the performance in terms of write and also over two times the read performance. And when we just make a quick comparison in terms of boot, then the hard drive took 43 seconds to boot from actually pressing the power button to then the last elements of rain meter loading, like the weather icons. And then with the SSDs, it only took 30 seconds. So, so far I'm very impressed with the performance of this MX200, not only in benchmarks, but also in terms of real world performance when it comes to booting applications, for example, and everything just feels a lot more snappy. Now, the only thing that I regret is that I didn't pick up the 500 gigabyte version, which retails for around 200 euros here in Germany. But then again, I still have like four bays empty in the Alienware, so that shouldn't be an issue to then just pick up a bigger capacity SSD in the future and go flash only. 
Now let me know what you guys think of this SSD upgrade as well as the process in general. I hope that you guys enjoyed the video and maybe it was helpful for some of you guys. If you like this video, please make sure to hit the like button as well as subscribe to the channel for many more videos in the future. Thanks for watching and I really hope to see you next time.